regardless of where you guys at currently in skill and wherever you're trying to be, whether it's a pro or do you just want to get better, I'm going to give you all my tips as a professional that I've used to develop my tracking and aiming abilities. First, before we start getting into those tips, I want you guys to understand one big thing that you need to understand if you're looking to improve as a player. There is not one tip or trick out there in existence that you can say, and then boom, tomorrow you're goaded at aiming. Like, that's just not gonna happen. And another thing people seem to misunderstand is just because you put a ton of hours into the game doesn't mean you're gonna ultimately better as a player. So to get started, the first thing we're gonna talk about is your sensitivity. So for me as a player and how I'm gonna be presenting in this guide, I'm gonna go with the general statement that a lower sensitivity is going to be more beneficial than a higher sensitivity. And I'm gonna show you one of the reasons why I say that now. So there is something in any kind of game that's called micro flick. And what those are is let's say I'm aiming to a target and let's say I'm off, you can see I'm off by his head slightly. So to make that little adjustment, from here to his head that I want to aim for my target, that is called a micro flick. The reason why I say lower sensitivity is better than others is when I'm this far off, you can see how easy and fluid it is for me at a low sensitivity to make those adjustments to get onto the head. Now, if I was at a higher sensitivity, you can see making these adjustments micro, like microly is a little harder. So if I was like this close, I would be overshooting it sometimes. So you can see it's just kind of like inconsistent and definitely really, really hard to be accurate with. So for that reason alone, and just being able to be fluid with tracking, targeting, micro flicks, all that sort of thing, I'm going to say lower sensitivity is better. If you're wondering what my current sensitivity is, I'm currently running at 1.5 sensitivity in game and 800 DPI just in general. Next, we're going to talk about using only your wrist for aiming versus using your wrist and arm for aiming. When I first started playing FPS games on the computer, I used to use my mouse like this. And as you guys can see here, my wrist is on the edge of the desk here. There's two major reasons as to why this is a problem. One major thing is, is when you have your hand against your desk like this, you are putting a lot of pressure on your wrist and partially cutting off the blood flow, which can cause a lot of problems like arthritis and crazy stuff. I won't get too into that. But just having all this pressure on your wrist for a long period of time is not good in any way, shape, or form. Second, you can see how much of my arm is hanging off the desk. Why is this a problem? Because when your arm is hanging off the desk, there is nothing supporting it except your muscles. So why this is a problem is because over time, your arm is going to become sore, tired, and all that sort of stuff. And you're not going to be able to focus that much, as well as just be accurate with your aiming in general. For that reason, if you have the desk space available to you, it is always beneficial to have your, um, your entire forearm resting on the desk. Because for that reason, there's no muscles being exerted on your forearm. And secondly, there's very little muscles being used on your bicep. So for me, when I'm mainly using wrist movement, that is when I'm tracking a more long range target because it requires very minimal movements. So you don't really want to be using your arm too much because you can end up over dragging, under dragging, whatever. Um, and it's going to be really hard to compensate for that. So what you guys can practice and what you should practice as well, you don't even have to be in the game to do this. Practice just moving your arm back and forth horizontally without going up and down too much. Just try to practice staying straight as possible. Step up from this is find a target and work on tracking that target, only moving your arm, but adjusting your wrist from side to side. So that way you're, you're staying level. So if I was to track this target, we get closer here because I'd be using my arm. My arm. What you want to do is track the target and just practice slowly moving your wrist. Just let your arm go. Don't put too much pressure on the wrist. Let your arm just start flowing with the target. And then you just want to practice that. This is a great way to practice it. Just aim dead center on the target and follow it through and let your arm carry its weight. So I would say for the majority of the time, I am generally using arm and wrist tracking. The only time that I'm using hand wrist for the most part it's when you're trying to stay tracking a short range target and you need to just be very, very precise and how far you're going to be moving. That's generally when I would say you should be tracking with only your wrist. Generally speaking, otherwise, you want to be using your wrist and arm. And all of these things can be practiced inside training. It is very recommended that you get a large mouse pad because if you ever looked at any pro player, they always have a massive mouse pad. Why? 
Because when they're doing their tracking and their flicks and whatever it may be, you do not want to be limited by how much you can move by the mouse pad. You want to be able to freely move your arm around as much as you possibly can. So that way, if you're doing something crazy, if you have to do like a really quick flick onto a target and then track and you're flicking, you don't want to flick off your mouse pad or anything like that. Moving forward, we're going to talk about mouse grip. Now, there's a few types of grips and ways to grip a mouse. Um... I'm not going to get into those too much. I'm just going to talk about what I use and what I know what works. Now, when I'm gripping my mouse pad, I have a wireless mouse here, so I can get a little bit closer here. Um, but I, I currently use a Razer Death Adder Elite. So the way I grip my mouse is I'm, like, gripping the whole thing. This is how it looks. When I'm gripping my mouse, this is what it looks like. So when I'm grabbing my mouse, this is what it currently looks like. I know it's hard to see. That's why I use the other thing to demonstrate. Some people... I've heard some people do, like this where there's like room in between um the mouse and their hand i don't really recommend that because it's like i mean if it works for you it works but i'm just saying like it's just kind of weird and i feel like that strains your uh muscles a little bit because you're arching your hand the whole time could be wrong if it works for you and you don't get tired from it go nuts so one of the last things that we're going to touch on in game is recoil patterns one of the things that gave me a head start in learning apex and being proficient with aiming was the fact that I played CSGO previously before Apex Legends. And in there, learning recoil patterns and understanding spray patterns and all that kind of stuff, which is the same thing, is very important to being a good player. Now, one thing to understand, Apex is nowhere near the level as dominant of a spray pattern as CSGO. CSGO, you're shooting and your gun's like... So you gotta counter that. In Apex, obviously, it's not that extreme. So for whatever reason, bullet holes are no longer showing inside of the game, which I usually would use to show you the spray pattern. But instead, I just thought of an improvised method, which is where I'm going to be dead set horizontally on a target here. You can see my dot is going to be at the very top of the line here. So it's perfectly horizontal. So if I let, hold left click and I do not move my mouse whatsoever, you can see there's a spray pattern there. Now, if I zoom in, you can see it a little bit better. Now, what, it, what it's doing, as you can tell if you're paying attention, it's just going up to the right to the left. So, to counter that, you need to do the opposite of what is currently happening. So, if it's going up, right, left, you need to go down, left, right. So, I will show you that now. So learning that recoil pattern, and they're different from every gun. So learning the recoil pattern of a gun is very important. So if you have a target and you're aiming at him and you don't move your mouse, you're going to see that you're not going to be able to do a lot of damage. So if I just start left clicking and I don't do anything with my mouse, I'm going to go off the, the, the character and I won't be able to kill. But if I counteract that recoil pattern, you guys can see here. So instead of going from only being able to do 68 damage, I'm able to control the recoil and one clip him. With ammo left over. So, understanding the recoil pattern is very, very important. Because it allows you to do more damage. You can get more damage in, which can make a difference in the fight. Because if you're doing 68 damage to somebody in the head, obviously you're not always going to hit them in the head. But you understand my point. If they get hit for 68, they might be inclined to still fight you. But if you can beam them for 100+, plus, they're going to back up, heal, and then that buys you more time to continue aggressing. Okay, so the last thing that we are going to be talking about today is Kovacs. And how to utilize Kovacs to improve or refine your aim. I heard there's another program called Aim Labs that's like free. I don't know, you guys can check it out. I don't know anything about it, but we're gonna be talking about Kovacs today. So one of the few, um, I don't use a lot of Kovacs. I prefer to practice in game, but if I need to warm up quickly or if I wanna refine my tracking mechanics a little bit, or IE, like I said, make it more consistent, I will load up Kovacs and practice. I personally use Ascended Tracking uh, V3. Now, the reason why I use this is you can see that there is randomized targets that are randomly moving. They randomly strafe in randomized patterns. They could long strafe, they could jiggle, short strafe. You don't know what they're going to be doing. So the reason why this is very effective is because it makes you a lot better at reacting and predicting someone's movement. And at a higher level of Apex play, a lot of players are going to be strafing. So like I said, what I recommend, it's just pretty simple. You track the target. They have randomized movement and it gets your predictions a lot better. You track the target and just practice it. Don't worry if you're not good at it at the, at the beginning because I was very, very bad at it. But it gets you a lot better with your reaction time and being able to predict movements as players. Now again, 
This isn't directly going to translate into the game as in like, I'm going to be goaded once I play this map. Playing this for like 15, 20 minutes a day will have a significant uh, impact on your game, but it's not going to be so much to where you're like, bro, I was trashed before this, and then I load up Kovacs, I'm goaded, I can get signed. It's not like that. Another thing to understand is grinding Kovacs for two hours a day is not going to make you a better player. And it needs to be understood that Kovacs is a refining program. It is to refine your aiming ability as well as create more consistencies in your aim. It will not make you the most goaded aimer in the game. There's so many people that grind high scores in Kovacs, but they're dog shit at Apex. So if that doesn't prove it, then like, I don't know what else does. But Kovacs is an amazing tool at making your aim more consistent, as well as being able to have increased reaction time and better predict your target's movement. Just want people to understand the main way to improve in specifically Apex Legends is to play the game. So to wrap things up, I really do hope you guys learned something new today. And I promise you guys, if you implement some of these ideas and strategies into your gameplay moving forward, you will see an improvement in your gameplay, specifically in your aiming ability. If you guys like this video, feel free to let me know if you want more guides to come out as far as like maybe movement, rotations, like anything of the sort. If there's anything, other, other guides that you would like to see from a professional on how to be better at the game, please feel free to comment down below. And again, if you guys did enjoy, please drop a like. I'd very much appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching. I love you so much, and I'll see you guys soon.